Let's talk about flows. Let's do it for the most important kinds of examples so we see the big picture ideas, but these ideas do apply to harder examples. The most important kind of examples to think about with flows are linear equations, okay? But we can think about flows for nonlinear equations as well. We got a linear differential equation. Let's just take a, a concrete example here. dy dt equals, well, let's use the example from before, say 4y. I guess it was negative 4y. Let's use negative 4y. Let's go ahead and think about that differential equation for a generic initial value problem. Generic IVP. So I used a particular number there, negative four, but I'm using an arbitrary symbol for my initial condition. Whenever I use an arbitrary symbol for the initial condition, y, y sub zero, I call that a generic IVP. I'm thinking of y sub zero is fixed, but just not specified. We know the unique solution of this just by experience. Y equals, leave some space, Y sub zero e to the negative four T, right? C e to the negative four T where C is arbitrary would be a general solution of this and represent infinitely many functions. But if I think of y0 as fixed, then y, c equals y0, and I'm thinking of this as one particular function. And then I give this function a name. I call it phi sub y0 of t. What we're used to doing here when we think about this is thinking of this as a function of t. And we can graph it. It's going to be an exponential decay graph. If y0 is positive, it's going to look like this. That would be what it looks like if y sub 0 is positive. But we could do it when y sub 0 is negative, and then it would look like this. That would be a different value of y0. y0 could also be 0. This could be the 0 function, which is an equilibrium solution of the differential equation. Right, your right-hand side function here, your f of y is a linear function. That's what makes this a linear differential equation. If you graph it, f of y, it looks like this. And you could think about the, you could think about the phase line. The phase line is going to look like this. And zero is going to be a sink. Just like this equilibrium solution is a sink in a sense, all other solutions approach it as t goes to infinity. This is what we're used to, right? What's new with the flow idea? The flow idea is to say, you know, when I look at that equation, so far I've been thinking of y0 is fixed and t is the variable, but wait a minute, whether a letter is a variable or is a constant is all in your head. Why not think of t is fixed and y0 is the variable? I could do that if I want, a little weird but I could. To emphasize that, I use slightly different notation. I use a cursive phi, you might call it, superscript t sub of y0. This notation is not completely standard across all the reading you might do about this. And you can look up flows of differential equations online if you like. Not completely standard notation. I think it's the best notation to make the T a superscript. Do I need to use a cursive fee instead of this fee? Uh, no, I just like it. I think it's pretty. It also kind of just distinguishes it from this. But they are related to each other. The formula for this is the exact same formula. The only difference is we're just thinking about it differently. We're thinking about t is fixed and y0 is the variable. Really, this is this is a linear function of y0. It's a constant times y0. That's an exponential function of t. A constant times an exponential decay function. This is a linear function of y0, a constant 
times y zero. Well, why bother? What's what's the point? I could think I could think of this for lots of different values of t, any value of t that I want. The simplest value of t to think about is when t equals one. I call that the time one map. set t equal to one and the function becomes t superscript one of y zero equals well in this case it's e to the negative four times y zero that is a linear function of y zero you could graph it as a function of y zero if you wanted to it's not so clearly it's necessarily useful uh that e to the negative four would be its slope e to the negative four is a pretty small number, close to zero, but it is positive. The graph of this would be a straight line with a small slope, small positive slope. Is it worth graphing it? It actually is. I don't know if I'll have time to explain why here. Why is this worth thinking about? Because you can relate it to the differential equation and this relationship to the differential equation generalizes in a couple ways that are worthwhile. One way it generalizes is to higher dimensions. If instead of a number here, instead of a scalar differential equation with a number there, if Y becomes a capital vector Y and that number becomes a matrix, these kinds of ideas still work actually. Y zero becomes a matrix and that thing becomes the ma a matrix exponential, also a matrix. And we write, when we write it this way, when we talk about the, the flow, that's a matrix related to the matrix exponential and that's a vector. So it works in higher dimensions. That's one reason it's worthwhile to think about. Another reason that it's worthwhile to think about is these kinds of ideas generalize to nonlinear differential equations as long as they're autonomous, meaning the right-hand side function only depends on y. Doesn't quite work so well with non-autonomous equations. So we kind of keep ourselves to autonomous equations. Even if it's nonlinear, even though that was negative four y squared, these kinds of ideas related to flows still, I'm about to explain a little bit more detail, still work. What doesn't work is the matrix exponential is not relevant anymore, but the flow idea still is relevant. And the relationship between the differential equation and the flow with regard to the time one map that I'm about to say still is relevant. And what is that relationship? With this time one map, you can create a difference equation. yn equals p superscript one of yn minus one. Now don't be bothered by the fact that here I'm using a y sub zero and here I'm using a y sub n minus one. Just arbitrary symbol there, right? In fact, it, if you do look this kind of stuff up online, oftentimes they don't put the subscript there. They just call it a y. I am trying to kind of relate it to the initial condition. So that's why I'm putting the subscript there. It's a difference equation. Give me an initial condition. I can iterate this function to find the next value of y. It's a discrete kind of thing. Y1 would be p superscript one of y0. Y2 would be p superscript one of y1. Y3 would be p superscript one of y2, et cetera, that goes on forever and ever. I get a sequence of points, numbers. If these were, it was a vector situation, these things would be vectors. And when your differential equation is autonomous, something nice happens, even if it's nonlinear. This one's linear, but even if it was nonlinear, what I'm about to say will happen with some caveats that I'm not gonna go into right now. And that is, that the value of yn 
that you get by iterating this function, this linear function, is the same as the solution of the differential equation at time n. That's the key relationship right, right there, key relationship. Key relationship between the differential equation, solution, notice this is not a cursive phi, that's on purpose, and the difference equation. But it only works this way when your differential equation is autonomous. If it's not autonomous, if there are t's on the right-hand side, then this doesn't work, this thing down here. You can still do this kind of stuff, but this relationship doesn't work anymore. And that's not as good. So this relationship tells you you can study you could study the different difference equation by knowing by knowledge of the differential equation and maybe vice versa. There's this relationship between them that could be useful. It can be sometimes useful theoretically. It can be sometimes useful um, computationally and visually. And as we go further in the course, in the lectures, for example, I use Mathematica to help us and these relationships to help us visualize things. Okay. And the, the culmination of all of this comes in chapter five when we um, try to prove some things based on these ideas related to some pretty important concepts. But I can't really go into detail without just, it'd be too much detail. It's already a lot of detail as it is, right? If you haven't been watching the lectures, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, right? Like, I haven't watched the lectures. I haven't, maybe you haven't read the PowerPoints either. I have no idea what I'm talking about. If you've been keeping up with the lectures, then you this should feel familiar. If you've been watching the lectures but falling asleep, then that's another another problem. I know it's not, not so, super fun to just watch lectures, but uh, trying my best to get across this content. This to me is what makes this course worthwhile to connect differential equations in linear algebra when we generalize this to vectors. Okay. All right. Have a good day.